Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about sentence placement. How should we organize a paragraph or passage, okay? You're going to have questions on the GED in the language arts section that will ask you, where should this sentence be placed in the paragraph or passage? After this lesson, hopefully you will be able to do that fairly well. So we're going to do a guided practice exercise involving this, and this should really help you. Okay, rearranging sentences. You really need to review those transition words and phrases that I put up before. You go back, do that lesson if you haven't done that. You really need to understand those transition words. Download the relevant documents. Okay, this is a common question on the GED. They'll say something like, where would sentence 7 best fit? Before sentence 8, after sentence 5, before sentence 7, but after sentence 5, etc. Think about the transition words and phrases and where the sentence fits, as well as the main idea and detail of that particular paragraph or passage to make sure it does fit. Remember things like the conclusions at the end, okay, and the introductions at the beginning. Those are basic, but most of these questions will be much more in-depth than that, and that's why these transition words come in handy. Knowing sequence words will tell you where something is in a sequence. Having an idea of how parallelism works will give you an idea of where something may fit. Parallelism is where you use a grammatically similar set of words and phrases to show that things are related to each other. An argument or passage is logically ordered. So look at how, how the order is reflected from the introductory paragraph on down through the subsequent ones. Okay? So if the introduction paragraph says there's three reasons why and lists three of them, and the detail paragraphs have three of them but they're in a different order, then something might be amiss. Something might be wrong. Okay? So now we're going to go into the guided practice. You have to refer to the slides, uh, refer to the uh, handout called gp5placement.pdf. It's available underneath the video on YouTube or in the lesson if you're taking the Blackboard version of the course. You need to have it open while we do the questions. It's called Flood Assistance Town Hall. Okay, just so you make sure you have the right one. Okay, Flood Assistance Town Hall. All right, I'll give you a moment to get that. Remember, you could pause the video at any time by pressing the space bar button on your keyboard or tapping your phone or mobile device. Okay, we're back. I'm going to give you the questions and then I'm going to give you a moment to go through the reading, the passage, and finding it. Okay? So, right off the bat, do any of the sentences seem misplaced? Remember, you have to read this passage. Okay? Where should sentence 4 be placed or remain where it is? Why? Where should sentence 7 be placed or remain where it is? Why? Where should sentence 8 be placed or remain where it is? Why? How would you fix sentence 2 and 3 to eliminate the fragment in 3? What transition words might you use to make 11 less awkward? How would you fix sentence 12? How would you punctuate sentence 4? All right, and I'm going to read through the passage with you. So get that passage out and read along while I go through it. No one's going to read along with you on the exam, but this is just for a guided practice. Flood Assistance Town Hall. To begin with, thank you for coming to this town hall. I know the flooding damage from the hurricane has affected many of our lives. Not only our lives, but also our businesses. To digress momentarily, I do want to talk about a really good discount on pumps from Hoffman Pumps, if anyone needs the phone number later or after the town hall meeting. Further, in those areas, houses with basements need water pumps and vacuuming, which cost the average homeowner nearly $7,000 each. To resume discussion, flooding in the lowland areas was perhaps the worst. This is before even considering the water damage and massive service interruptions. The Midlands also experienced some flooding, but the average household reported negligible damage despite some service interruptions. We have grants available to help defray some of the costs in the lowlands. There is also state emergency services assistance available for those in the lowlands in the specified zip code, and we will hand out the literature to anyone who needs it. The downtown area experienced massive business losses, and the Small Business Association is here and will discuss the matter further after I'm done and the SBA grants and loans available after I finish. 
In conclusion, flooding is a serious issue in our area, and we at the town council are addressing it and will continue to listen and review your concerns, which is why we instituted the grant program, coordinated to prevent further service interruptions and have the SBA commissioner here to speak about business concerns. Okay, you'll notice with that passage, there's letters and numbers. When they say look at the sentence, they'll say look at one, what would you change in one? And we're referring to the thing with that after it, that particular sentence. They'll put letters. The letters are just to block off the passages. They usually don't refer to the uh, letters, but those are for each paragraph. Okay, so I'm going to give you a moment to reread the passage and find the answers to these questions which are now on the screen and which I have repeated to you previously. Remember, you could tap your phone or mobile device to pause it or press the space bar on your keyboard. I'll give you a moment to do that now while you answer these questions in your notebook or on Blackboard. Okay, we're back. I hope you answered those questions. If you haven't, you should really need to pause and go back and answer them because this is a guided practice, all right? It's important that you do these exercises. We're going to move on. I'm assuming you have found and answered the questions, so we're going to go through them. Do any of these sentences seem misplaced? Yeah, I should hope so. Where should sentence four be placed to remain where it is? Why? After sentence five, it's a digression. The mention of pumps sets the fella off who's talking to the town hall. They said, further, in those areas with basements that need water pumps and vacuuming, which cost the average homeowner nearly $7,000 each. So he's going to digress there. To digress momentarily, I do want to talk about a really good discount on pumps, etc., etc. So a digression is going off topic a little. It's kind of on topic vaguely, but it's off the beaten track. All right? It's kind of about pumps, but it's not really on topic. Okay, it's not totally irrelevant, but it's somewhat irrelevant. So that's why it's after five. Where should sentence seven be placed to remain where it is? Why? So let's look at sentence seven. This is before even considering the water damage and massive service interruptions. Okay, we had said before that we'd put sentence four after sentence five. So what we have to realize is, okay, we're going to put sentence four after sentence five, and sentence seven would be placed after that. Okay, so it would be after that digression. All right, it would say, and this is, so they would have to resume discussion flooding. You know, there might be flooding in the lowland areas is the worst. Okay, the $7,000. Then it says, this is before even considering the water damage and massive service interruptions. Okay, so nearly $7,000. And then they go, okay, this is before considering the water damage or whatever. Those, those transition words, set us off before considering. So we, we were considering something else. So we were considering the total costs of damages. Okay, and then we see, oh, that sentence, we see the word damage again. So link those two up in your head, okay? Make use of those context clues. Where should sentence eight be placed or remain where it is? Why? Sentence eight, the Midlands also experienced some flooding, but the average household reported negligible damage despite some service interruptions. So we want to keep the lowlands together, the Midlands together, and the part where they talk about businesses together. So we're going to place it after 10. You might say, well, couldn't I place it after 11? Well, let's read it. 10 says there is also the state emergency available for those in the lowlands in the specified zip code and we'll hand out literature to anyone who needs it. That's the last thing about the lowlands. So we could put that after that. You're saying, well, downtown has a sentence. Can I put it after that? But if we go down, right, and we see where it says we instituted in the grant program, coordinating to prevent further service interruptions and have the SBA commissioner here. The further service interruptions are mentioned with the, the Midlands, okay? So we want to keep it in the same order as the conclusion had it. So usually when you have a paragraph or passage, you want to keep them in the same order as you mention them. When you're reiterating, you're summarizing in your conclusion or how you introduced it in your introduction. So after 10, it fits better than 11. And again, we got to think about parallel structure and how things are set up. Okay, if we do things in a certain order, we keep doing things in a certain order. If we do things in a certain grammatical way, we try and keep doing them in the same grammatical way throughout a passage or paragraph. How would you fix sentence two and three to eliminate the fragment in three? Okay, what's a fragment? You remember that? A fragment 
is an incomplete sentence. It does not contain either a subject, a verb, or both. Okay? So a dependent clause has one but not the other. An independent clause has both. Now, let's look at that. Uh, three says, not only our lives, but also our businesses. And sentence two is, I know the flooding damage from the hurricane has affected many of our lives, not only our lives, but also our businesses. Okay, so it's a dependent clause. It has no subject or verb. Okay, so here's how I corrected it. I know the flooding damage has affected not only our lives, but also our businesses. You may say, oh, I heard some politicians or whatnot saying something of that nature. In a speech, that's fine, but it's still a uh, fragment. If you're using proper grammar and they ask you to correct a fragment, this is what they're looking for. They're not looking for, you know, uh, you trying to put your spin on the Gettysburg Address or something of that nature. Okay, we're just looking to have grammatically correct sentences. We're not looking for flamboyant rhetoric or, or, or great speeches. We're just looking to have grammatically correct sentences. What transition words might you use to make 11 less awkward? I would split 11 into two sentences and alter the second sentence. Let's read 11. The downtown area experienced massive business losses and the Small Business Association is here and will discuss the matter further after I'm done and the SBA grants and loans available after I finish. Okay? It's long. That's a long sentence. So I'd split it into two sentences. The SBA is here and will discuss the matter and the SBA grants available after I finish. Okay? I, I shorten it a lot because I it, it would have been the downtown area experienced massive business losses, period. The SBA is here and we'll discuss the matter further after I'm done and the SBA grants available after I finish. See how I split it up into two sentences? I made it shorter. In general, shorter is better on the GED exam. How would you fix sentence 12? Let's look at sentence 12. In conclusion, flooding is a serious issue in our area, and we at the town council are addressing it, and we'll continue to listen and review your concerns, which is why we instituted the grant program, coordinating to prevent further service interruptions, and have the SBA commissioner here to speak about business concerns. Okay, it's a run-on. I'd split into two sentences after area. Okay, so in conclusion, flooding is a serious issue in our area, period. We at the town council are addressing it, and we'll continue to listen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? See how I split it up into two sentences? Each one of those is an independent thought. So an independent thought with the subject and a verb can get its own sentence. How would you fix sentence 12? Let's look at 12. In conclusion, flooding is a serious issue in our area, and we at the town council are addressing it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, we talked about this already. It's run on. We split it into two sentences. How would I punctuate four? To digress momentarily, I do want to talk about a really good discount on pumps from Hoffman Pumps. If anyone needs the phone number later or after the town hall meeting. Okay, it's missing a little something. Okay, I'd split it at, at if anyone. Okay, so I'd say, to digress momentarily, I do want to talk about a really good discount on pumps from Hoffman Pumps. Period. Okay, then I'd say, if anyone needs the phone number later or after the town hall meeting, contact me. Or, I have a discount if anyone needs it. Okay, you make it shorter, you make it complete thoughts. That was a dependent clause that didn't have a full thought in the second half of that sentence. Okay, so I fixed that. All right, and that's it for this lesson. I'll see you next time.